Take a look at the following video clips. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet. States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear. Exactly what you would expect from a thin-skinned racist bully. If Shifty Schiff will not let Hunter Biden come, and if he will not bring the whistleblower for, every Republican in Congress should take a walk and say, this is a farce. Do you spot the common denominator? It's not gender, age, or race. It's not even political affiliation. In fact, you can't even see it. It's a hidden virus, and we're all prone to infection. The diagnosis? Logical fallacies. Bacteria reproduce very simply and rapidly by doubling their contents and splitting in two. Just one bacterium, dividing every 20 minutes, could produce nearly 5,000 billion billion bacteria in one day. Logical fallacies in politics aren't something you can just look up online and expect results. They're embedded within our everyday lives, and so often we don't find the irrationality of certain arguments. Or, even if we do, we can't identify why we find that argument illogical. So, what is a logical fallacy? A logical fallacy is a form of an argument that is not based in fact, and rather um, it's intended to persuade an individual while not necessarily in a factual basis. Faulty arguments are everywhere, and, and a lot of times because they're simple and they're accessible and they're memorable. So people will hang on to something like a personal attack against somebody else rather than the real substantive deconstruction of somebody else's argument. Logic itself often takes a long time to unfold. It takes a lot of work. It requires um, connecting, connecting points. So when you have somebody use a logical fallacy, they're sort of catchy, they're flashy. So I think it's kind of dangerous. Logical fall fallacies are dangerous in that way. For the upcoming 2020 election, we want candidates to answer the who, what, when, where, and why questions of issues that are important to us, like climate change, health care, gun control, or cybersecurity. But it's how the candidates address these issues that influence the credibility of the information presented. Should a candidate inject a logical fallacy, it can cause dangerous and inflammatory side effects. Somebody watching the argument or listening to the argument that doesn't want to put in the work or the time is going to think that the person who has the logical fallacy that's more sometimes it's more memorable those are going to be the ones that where people think oh that person won the argument it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of donald trump is not in charge of the law in our country because you'd be in jail secretary clinton those are the kind of attacks that don't do us as informed voters any good the presidential candidates and politicians are often appealing to the fact that people might be ignorant, or they make that assumption that people are ignorant and trying to mislead voters, which is really harmful for our democratic process. And it's hard to pinpoint what the, you know, one reason or how we could truly solve that. I think it's a, a really big issue that has to be tackled. While there are dozens of logical fallacies to exist, the most popular one in politics is called ad hominem, or attacking the man. That's an easy way to try to discredit everything that that person is going to say the rest of the time you listen to them. And once you categorize somebody, once you say that person is a racist, well, I don't have to listen to anything they say anymore because they're a horrible, evil person. So if I can categorize you, I can diminish you. Ironically, the danger of using a logical fallacy is the same as a virus. It spreads. Because of Facebook and Twitter and social media and 24-hour news cycles, all we get are the sound bites, are the headlines. And unfortunately, the more technological we get, the more advanced we get, the more singularly focused we are on our own ideas and don't have to engage in political dialogue. And it will be the death of us. With the ability to like have a, a, I guess, a platform, you now have the ability to use logical fallacies in order to try to make an argument. Infection makes me think of, of quickly spreading and damaging in some way. And so I think that's the way the internet has allowed logical fallacy, fallacies to infect our thought. You're not gonna learn or glean any factual issues from debates. You're gonna see people's character when they're being attacked. You're gonna see how they attack people which is why nobody watches them anymore. 
You know, what you watch is the post commentary. Debate is the cornerstone of democracy. If we have people going to the polls and not understanding the issues and not understanding who they're voting for, that puts our entire political system at risk. So my hope is that somehow we can begin to deconstruct these fallacies or at least educate people enough to understand how to spot fallacies so that they can be a more informed consumer of information and they can be a more informed voter. So to our candidates, take this antidote as a reflection of my vision for 2020. Discourse with civility and honor. Win by logic, not deception. While there may be differences in opinions regarding the value of debates in today's changing media landscape, one thing remains clear. It's up to us as the voters of tomorrow to determine who wins our vote more so by reason than contamination. And voters, here's a vaccine. Stay informed, be vigilant. You never know what may be lurking behind the podium. Who knows, it could be infected.